right guys we got a 8200 John Deere that we've got to split in half I'm pretty certain I looked at it last fall when they were harvesting and uh, I was pretty certain that it was I put a gate it's pretty simple to do let's just go ahead and do it um, so remember full drive clutch packs spring loaded clutch packs Which means that it's spring applied, it's hydraulic pressure released. Well, everything except Kubota. They got they got to be different, you know. Come on. Somebody bent it right here and tweaked her a little bit. And you got to pull this shielding here off. Pull this off, then we can get in there. But so the simplest way is just find the port for it, which I'll show you where it's at. And uh, I don't remember if they're ten millimeter, or three eighths. And I'll grab both, I guess. Grab a three eighths. Grab this set here. Gotta get the doors open, you need two hands. Oh, get out of the way. But, uh... What the hell was I saying? Let's put this camera... Didn't make... Didn't, didn't make... I got too many damn things on my mind. I got the Peterbilt on my mind, too. I want to get that Peterbilt done. It's 10 millimeter. So here's your, it's back in here. I gotta loop my gauge back around the exhaust. If I remember right, that's how I did it. it can be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes to get it on there. And one thing is I drug my fitting through the dirt. Clean her off with some old brake clean there. Oh, come on, man. Get on there. Yeah, we got a problem here. That's what happens when you drag it through the dirt and get it full of red cinders. Probably need some new ones here. They're, they're not so great anymore. I've had a hard life. Huh. It's not really wanting to go on there. There it goes. Finally. I think it's on there. It's on there, okay. Alright, so we finally got that on there. So, basically, what you're verifying here is you're verifying that you're switching the cabs working, and you're verifying that it's getting oil, that it's getting oil pressure, you're verifying your cartridge valve, you're verifying that it's getting oil pressure in two-wheel drive, and it dumps it in four-wheel drive, since it's a spring-loaded clutch pack. Let us route our hose. We'll fill it under here and we'll walk around and grab it and fire it up. Oscar, are you watching this operation, buddy? Why don't you go in there with everybody's running the heater in the office, bud? Okay. Never 
fails at twist. Ports wants to be upside down. Okay. Well, obviously they got it full drive right. Well, maybe. Let's see here. I'm trying to remember where the rocker switch was. I think it's. I think that's the rocker switch. I remember which one it was. Ah, it's over here. Forgot. So go to full drive. Actually, all right. So it, it's only—it's not much. There's two wheel drive, watch the needle move. I need a smaller gauge than I need. There's two wheel drive. There's four wheel drive. So Switching the coil and all that stuff's working. I might go find a smaller gauge. It has smaller increments, maybe a 0 to 200 PSI gauge. I'll see if I can find one of those. And I'll put that on there and we'll just double check it. Make sure we're getting the right oil pressure. Which it which it doesn't really matter. It's dumping it. It's not the full drive's not working, okay? So we know that we know that the oil pressure is dumping. It's really no use to even check the oil pressure side. We know we're in two wheel drive. That's what the complaint is. Uh, we know that pressure's coming on in two wheel drive and pressure's going off in four wheel drive. So there's really no need to verify oil pressure. Now we we know what it's doing. Uh, I need a smaller gauge on there. But the problem is no four wheel drive, which means if the oil's dumping on it and you know it's dumping, the next thing to look at is the stub shaft between the front differential and the transmission if that all looks okay then you got a bad clutch pack Is there something wrong with the front differential? So it's not. Let's start the mechanical front wheel drive clutch pack. Now, when two wheel drive, you can just keep turning the drive line in the front differential, which means that's not good. <laughs> the pinion stripped or something on it. So we got to get the front end out from underneath. That's what we got to do. So. Probably get these counterweights off the front here. Uh, I'll put the side panel back on, pull my gauge off. I don't need that on there anymore. And we'll slip the front end out from under. I have to pull the steering lines off, cap those. And uh, yeah, and I think my spreader bar is at home. Wonderful. I could probably get it out of there without it, but it's a lot easier with it. Anyway, uh, let me figure out what I'm going to do here. See what we got here.
really see chunks coming out of there, but there should be chunks because that pinion just goes round and round and nothing happens. There's got to be some chunks in there somewhere. It sure is nice and glittery. Get a screwdriver or something and poke in the hole there. I'm thinking there'll be some chunks coming out of there if I poke around in that hole. <sighs> doing gear train work like this it's come apart like this you want to talk about something like that's where definitely where I'll wear those rubber gloves man that metal slivers getting your hands everywhere on these things really no metal chunks in there huh okay really would have expected to see metal chunks in there that's kind of a surprise, actually. So I wonder what the hell's going on. There's no lockers or anything. I gotta get in the book, I guess, and see what the hell is comprised here of this drive. Is there something? Okay. You know, back in here somewhere, and it's stripped. Stripped a shaft spline or something back in there. Because I don't care what you say, it shouldn't... With the tires on the ground, you shouldn't be able to put it in two-wheel drive and just turn the shaft round and round and round, you know. Something's going on. I was kind of expecting to see chunks and stuff like that coming out of there. Probably not magnetic either. Well, no, no, it's not. We got one hub that's not holding, and it's just turning in the. That's what's going on. I bet we lost one of these hubs. Let's pull the plugs on these and let's see if we, uh, I bet we lost a hub. Where's that breaker bar at? Let's, let's pull, let's pull a hub plug, see if we've got one that's clear full of metal. Sometimes you can jack them up off the ground too. So if I don't see anything on this other one, jack it up off the ground and grab the wheels. And see if we can, we'll put it in four wheel drive and see which one slips, you know. I've done that before. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Let me pull this plug out of this one. seeing so what the hell's going on with this damn thing the ring gears turning
fired up again. I want to watch these axles when I'm trying to turn it. Okay, it's got a bad hub. I just really thought I would have, because I I didn't check that, to be honest with you. I just put a gauge on it, because they said no four-wheel drive. And, uh, usually, when you have bearing failures or things go wrong in these hubs, you'll what'll happen is you'll, you'll, you'll get seal leaks out here on these, is what'll happen. And it was nothing was leaking when I looked at it. And I, I remember walking around it thinking, well, maybe he's got a bad hub. And I remember walking around it and looking at it and going, well, nothing's leaking there. It doesn't look that bad. Something come unpuckered in there. So let's see what happened. So we got to get the, got to get something underneath this thing and support it, block it up. I'm curious to see what happened on this one. Something. Well, yeah, 
That's what happened. I'll be damned. The stub shaft broke. slide out means it's broke this stub shaft here something happened here uh. okay let's pull the ring gear off of it Get this allen wrench and back this nut off Or shaft, or the stub shaft broke in it. So that shaft should slide out of there, but it's kind of boogered up here, not coming through the this collar. We got to beat that out of there. We still got to get this other piece out. Get in here and let's look at this other piece. This may not be too bad of a fix here. Maybe. This piece comes out in a somewhat decent manner. Which, I don't know. You might have to come out through the other side. Uh, let me see here. How can we... Is there any way we can get a hold of that without pulling that... It'd be nice if we could get this off of there without pulling that hub and putting a seal in it. If we could get that stub shaft out of there. Um, let me think of something here real quick. Can I get can I get a bar and get underneath the lip where it's mushroomed out and kind of pry on it and mess with it and see if I can get it out of there? I wonder what they did. They must have really done something harsh with it. I don't know. Might have to pull that hub anyway. Something else might have happened to cause it. We don't really know yet.
out the other side. So I gotta get this pan out here. I'm gonna get this pan out. Pull the snap ring off, beat that pin out. I gotta get the tie rod in loose, pull the knuckle, so on and so forth. You find that snap ring fires. Isolators there on each side of the steering knuckle or steering cylinder eye. Now we're going to get this off, okay? Cotter pins, you got to love them. It's looking like maybe I think it actually the sledgehammer. The bad thing is it's at the shop in Climate Falls. It's like by the Peterbilt. So it's a little hammer will do it.
off of there now. Yeah. goes into the end of this and it's stuck in there. The actual drive line. Then we gotta figure out what we're gonna do there. We're gonna have to disassemble the drive line or weld something to it and slide hammer this broken piece out of here. See it twisted it. Oh I think that's probably abuse dumping the clutch or something the way that's twisted. See if we can grab it with a pair of pliers and work it back and forth and get it out of there, maybe. Let's get a pair of them Nipex or Nipex or whatever the hell they're called. Pliers. I think that's dumping the clutch or something. That's, that's abuse there is what that is. chisel. Might have screwed that yoke up too where that spine's in there. be all right it just kind of shoved the bent splines back in in there that seems to be okay we got to beat it out of the center of that other one I got to make a parts list of what I need here let's see what this looks like might get a new one of these it's kind of screwed up I 
How's that U joint? Feels pretty good. Still got to get this one out of here. We need this stub shaft, new stub shaft, we have to get basically a complete seal kit. Probably gonna have to get a new yoke for that drive line where it splines into that. This looks pretty good actually right here. Well, that's what happens probably dumping the clutch on pavement or Something like that. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a that's abuse right there. One hundred percent certain. There's no nothing really to, to seize up. You know, if it, they twisted it and twisted it and busted it off. So I was thinking about this tractor as I was driving home, and it they could have been spinning on, he could have been spinning trying to get out of a, a hole or something, and then that tire, you know, hit dry ground, and then it grabbed real hard when it grabbed that solid surface, and that could have, you know, it may not have been abused. It might have, he was, he might have been trying to get out of a muddy hole in the field or something and hit dry ground, and that, you know, or where it was coming out of the field and there's a lot of their fields are right by the pavement and he might have come out on the pavement there and, and he was spinning trying to give her hell to get out of there and he might have hit you know something solid and so it may not have been abused might have just been trying to get out of a hole <laughs> 